Welcome to our 5 on 5. I'm Devin Gooden. I'm joined here today with Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, how are you? Devin, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Well, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Every year, we seem to be fighting more and more fires. The rising costs and unhealthy smoke levels are hurting Southern Oregon's economy. What are you and other legislators doing to bring change to current forest policies? Well, there are a number of immediate steps. First, I wrote the law with Senator Mike Crapo to start focusing on fire prevention. The government essentially uh, discriminated against the whole cause of uh, prevention because they just borrowed from the prevention fund to put the uh, fires out and then the problem got worse. I'm also working on more National Guard uh, personnel, uh, air tankers. These are all part of the immediate steps. But I'll tell you what the bottom line is. The bottom line is that children and senior citizens in the West shouldn't have to be afraid of opening up the front door and then choking on smoke. If this continues, we're going to have clean air refugees, and that's just not acceptable to me. So Vicki Christensen, the new head of the Forest Service, is going to be preparing, at my request, a list of the next steps in terms of our priorities, in terms of fighting fire. And I'm very hopeful that they'll focus on fuels reduction, which is going in there, cleaning out that dead material that if there's a lightning strike, you got an inferno on your hands. So on Friday, we had some strong positive economic news, but tariffs and the ramifications of those policies are still weighing on people's minds. You called the administration's policy on trade chaos. What should be done to get that trade policy on well, track? The, the president has a lot of us on the key question of the Chinese ripping off our technology. I mean, there's no question that they, they have done that, and sometimes they require, if you're going to have jobs in China, they require the United States and the Chinese go in, as, in effect, as a joint venture. But what he did in terms of actual implementation is we need the allies, our trade allies who buy a lot of Oregon's products, to be with us. And until very recently, he really alienated the allies. Now, we learned uh, at the end of last week that he might hold off on some of those tariffs to look at a new approach that could focus on trade enforcement, stopping countries from ripping us off, stealing our technology, but not with the downside of hurting our relationship from our ally with our allies who buy our products. Well, this is a good place to take a break. We'll have so much more with Senator Wyden when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Five on Five. We're here with Senator Wyden. Now, Senator Wyden, you met with the Planned Parenthood organization earlier today. What is your goal with their organization? My, my goal is to make sure that our country doesn't turn back the clock on women's health care, doesn't turn back the clock to the days when the government, rather than women, made the basic decisions about reproductive health choices for women. I'm also very concerned about the president's nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. The president has already made it clear that he's going to put judges on these uh, courts that would turn back uh, the clock. So I want to make sure that Oregonians understand what's at stake. It's not just Roe versus Wade, but also the president wants to get rid of the protection that I was involved in getting in place to make sure that those with pre-existing conditions in Oregon didn't get discriminated against. So these are big health decisions coming up, and I don't think Brett Kavanaugh is going to be on our side. Well, in turn, you recently filed two pieces of legislation that would give women and minority entrepreneurs opportunities to grow in their business, but also increase access to affordable housing for low-income families. How will this work? Well, Senator Booker and I, um, he's the uh, senator from New Jersey, have uh, led the effort to try to expand access uh, to capital for small businesses, minorities, women. And in effect, what we're saying is, why should there be a double standard? Why should there be one standard for the powerful, the multinational uh, companies, and quite another, and one that isn't fair, to people who are just looking for a fair shot. That's what the American system is all about, is making sure that there's fair access to markets in America. That's what our legislation does. And so it's said that you had a win over President Trump with the withdrawal over uh, appeal court nominee Ryan Bounds. How did that withdrawal come about? What, what happened was I have long had a bipartisan judicial selection committee. I had it with the late Mark Hatfield. I had it with my former colleague, uh, Gordon Smith, continued it with Senator Merkley. And the uh, president's choice, a gentleman named Ryan Bounds, really misled the committee. He talked about his uh, diversity experiences in high school, but he neglected to uh, 
tell us about some really ugly writings uh, while he was in college. This offended uh, not just Democrats, but also some very conservative Republicans. The decision uh, was by the president to withdraw the nominee. I would think it was a victory for the Oregon way, which is to be straight with people and not mislead them in the judicial selection process that is bipartisan. Well, Senator, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Let's do it again. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.